Okay, so we should should have probably gotten a, a little pop up that says uh, "Got it." So that because we're uh, doing the recording now, this this recording will be in the classroom uh, by tomorrow. So if there's anything that you okay. if you do decide to, uh, to join the classroom, uh, then uh, like I said, this will be available for replay tomorrow. So today okay. we're going to be talking about CRMs and landing pages. The first thing that I want to do is uh, talk about what is a CRM. Now, there are many of them out there. Some of, some of them are free, some of them are low cost, and some of them that has a lot of uh, upgrades and, uh, and bells and whistles are going to be at a, a, at a little bit of a higher cost. So a CRM is what is known as a customer relationship manager. And I'm putting this down in the Word file. I'm not sharing my screen at the moment. Or, uh, or a customer relationship management. So it is a system that uh, that all business owners, especially realtors, need to have in order to maintain direct contact with your with your clients. Now, for those of you who are realtors uh, out there, the CRM, uh, your MLS or whatever uh, your MLS system you're using, which is your multiple listing service, is kind of like a CRM because you're putting their emails into the MLS for whatever searches that they're looking for. Uh, and then, the, the, and then you can contact them. But if you have other systems, other programs, other services that you're providing, and you want to uh, email people on a, on a, on a larger basis, like, you know, five, 10, hundred, or, or your entire list of people, then you definitely need to have a CRM of some sort. Now, the first one that I, that I used to use when I first got started uh, was was, I, was actually free. It was one that was known as Mailchimp. Now, Mailchimp does restrict uh, uh, their free version of, of their site. It uh, does have a lot of restrictions. I left them about two years ago, two and a half years ago, um, and I realized and I've heard that they become even more restrictive as to what uh, what they uh, can do or or what you can do. Now. The CRM uh, is uh, the, the main purpose or the first purpose of the CRM is email management. And what's and what that means is this is going to be how you store all your contacts. Now, whenever you get a new lead, that's what you'll be. Uh, you may also want to have what's known as a tag. A tag is something that you you give somebody to group them on, uh, 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 on your list. For an example, one of the tags that I use frequently is called, uh, it's just called new lead. So it, to me, it's just a lead. They have not bought anything yet. They're just, they're a, a tentative client. Uh, once they buy something from me, I actually remove the, the the new lead tag and then put down maybe they're a new client. So now that, now I, I now know that they are a paying client. Now, depending on what it is that you're providing, you may have a whole bunch of other tags depending on that. For an example, uh, me as a business consultant, if somebody buys into my uh, first level uh, consulting business, then they're going to be tagged with what is known as the uh, BK Basic, which is the name of my program. If they, <clears throat> Now, I know that anybody with the tag BK Basic have actually uh, uh, paid for and, and have enrolled into that program. Now, I, I know that I am not going to send an email to them to suggesting that they enroll into the program once they already have been enrolled. So that's why I, that's why I tag things that different way. And when you're running your CRMs, you will want to do the same thing. Now, with um, a MailChimp, I do believe that they do call them tags in there as well, if I recall correctly. There are other uh, there are other programs out there. Um, one of the one of the uh, bigger ones is known as uh, I think it's called Active Campaign. That is another one. The one that I'm using right now is something known as Keep K E A P. And when I'm sharing my screen here in a moment, uh, I'm going to be showing you how you do things in Keep. Now the the, the words that, and the terminology that that I'm using in let's say in Keep may be different than the uh, than the words that are used in, in the program that that you decide to go with. For an example. When you're setting up a sequence of, of events and keep, it is known as an automation. In MailChimp, they, they were called journeys. They mean the same thing, but they're, they're just called slightly different because each, uh, each CRM will have its own terminology. Now, here are some of the things that you want to look at whenever you are, uh, are considering a CRM. And it, and it all depends on what kind of business that you're going to be running. 
for an example, uh, th these are uh, uh, things, I'm gonna actually uh, start sharing my screen again so you can see the notes that I'm taking. Okay, let me hide, the, hide those little buttons. Okay, so I don't need this and I need to get rid of this. Okay. Um, this is, so here's uh, things to uh, look for in a CRM. There's quite a few things. Now, some of them, uh, some of the CRMs that you will uh, go with may have these. Some of them may not. Some of these may have these in limited supply, or some of these may have it. They will release some of these things uh, once you've actually um, uh, joined a, a higher level in, in their system. So, so the first thing that you want to make sure that it does it that you can't actually store contacts. Uh, information. The it, the two most important things that you're going to be wanting to get, everything else is, is secondary. You want to get their first name and their email. Anything, uh, the more things that you are asking from somebody when they come to your, let's say to a landing page or an opt-in page or a sales page, the more information that you ask uh, of them, the less likely they're going to fill it out. There's actually even been uh, talk about, do you even need their first name? And um, if you're just, uh, I would say that's that's up to you, but just be aware that the more information that you're asking for, the less likely they're going to fill out the form. So the email is by far the most important because that's how you're going to be contacting them. Having their first name helps you with your personalization. So I'm sure, uh, Crystal, that you've heard of those times where uh, you get an email probably from somebody you don't know and it says, hey, Crystal, and then it goes into the uh, into what the message says versus, hey, and there's an exclamation point and there's there's no personalization. That, personaliz that personalization does help in your email campaigns. It, it makes it... Uh, uh, better to read or, 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 the, or, or the reader of the message um, will, will actually have a more positive reaction to you. Now, getting their last name, their phone number, their, um, uh, their mailing address, those things are going to be secondary. And you can always ask, that, uh, ask for that information at a later time, and once, you know, once they've signed up with you. So that's the first thing that you want to look for in a CRM. And by default, all CRMs, you should be able to store their contact information because that's the purpose of a CRM. Um, other things that you want to have is uh, what is known as an autoresponder. Now, an autoresponder, there's 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 different kinds of autoresponders. One is going to be one that is going to be they re, uh, they uh, they they get an email once they do some uh, action. For an example, let's say you are. I responded, but forgot the S. So let's say somebody is uh, is coming to your uh, a landing page and they want to get this free report that you're that you're going to be uh, giving to them. Once they actually uh, put in their name and their email, you want an autoresponder to immediately respond to them. Doesn't matter if it's two o'clock in the morning on a on Christmas Eve. It doesn't matter. The thing is, he wanted you know the, those. That's one type of autoresponder that is going to be uh, the like an immediate uh, response. Another one one is going to be when you're doing a, a sequence of emails. So a sequence of emails may be, let's say, for an example, when I started uh, doing Mailchimp before I was a realtor, I had a, a real estate consultation business. And in that real estate consultation business, uh, my specialty was in lease options. And I had an autoresponder uh, have an email sequence go out every Tuesday morning at nine o'clock, uh, giving an update as to uh, you know what new houses that I was marketing uh, th that were now available or price change or went under contract. I sent that out once a week uh, to, my, uh, to my list of people, which was about 400 people. I would actually go and create the email Monday uh, Monday afternoon, and then I then I had it I had it timed to go out exactly at nine o'clock or nine o five or something like that on Tuesday mornings. So they were always getting that email at the same time every day or every week. Um, other uh, 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 an, another type of autoresponders is going to be like what we talked about um, in a a journey in Mailchimp or a, in an automation in Key. 
This is going to be, hey, maybe they uh, they signed up for your, uh, your email list to get this PDF. And then let's say you're having an event going on. And then maybe you will send out another email one day prior to the event. And then another, maybe another email uh, the day of the event, maybe an hour before the event as a reminder. So th those are different kinds of uh, autoresponders that you want to have. And these are by far one of the most important pieces of any kind of CRM is being able to contact your people without needing to always have to do it all manually. Now, talking about doing things manually, um, one of the th another reason you're going to want a CRM is that if you're building your list and you're still using your Yahoo account or Gmail account as your how you store uh, sending out the emails, um, there's a much larger chance that if you're going through like a Yahoo or a, a Hotmail or Gmail that we are sending out that email, it's actually going to um, I, be looked at as spam, and therefore you you will never know if it, if it even got delivered. And that so this so that is another uh, thing that you that you definitely want to uh, consider. Other ones that are, are going to be you you want to be able to uh, look at uh, your statistics. The, the statistics basically means is how do they uh, track that information? For an example, let's say you have a list of a hundred people and you send an email to all one hundred people. You want to know uh, which people have uh, opened the email. You want to know how many people have clicked on any links in that email. Uh, you want to also have uh, you know you want to know what your open rates are and your conversion rates are. Um, if you send out an email and let's say you only have a twenty percent open rate, which is considered fairly low, um, then you have to find out you know why are the other eighty people not opening my email which means they're either not active, actively opening emails or maybe they just mass deleted uh, and your email was one of them. So you you definitely want to be able to, uh, to, to track your, uh, your statistics. Uh, other things that you may also want to consider is does it does SMS, uh, does your autoresponder have a SMS a a texting ability? Which basically means uh, that they, let's say you have a reminder um, I'm sure a lot of you have done this before. Like, say you go to the chiropractor or the doctor or whatever, and you maybe have opted in for the texting campaign, and you'll get right reminders the day before or, or even the day of uh, to remind you of your appointment. So, if, if a good CRM like Keep does has SMS uh, texting uh, abilities, and let me think some other things you may want to consider. Um, oh, I also want to say, do they have any uh, checkout forms? Basically, this means can uh, if they're going to be buying something from you, you know, from one of your landing pages, how are you going to process that that, that credit card transaction? And then, uh, if you have a checkout form, is it a one-time pay or is a or is it a periodic pay? Like my, my uh, the classroom is seventeen dollars a month um, uh, form that they would be filling out. And then other things you may also want to consider is uh, landing pages. Now there is there is a a website out there called Zapier, which does uh, help uh, uh, some platforms uh, integrate with other platforms. So uh, these will be platforms that may not uh, normally uh, work uh, uh, together uh, directly. So you may need a, a Zapier link or you have a CRM that includes landing pages. So that, that that's built right into the CRM. This is one of the reasons I I left Mailchimp to go to Keep was because of the the how the ease of use of, of building landing pages, uh, and that's that's definitely something how uh, something that you are definitely going to be wanting to, uh, to do. Um, okay, so. So those are the, those are some of the aspects that you want to be looking for in any CRM. There are a lot of other ones, but these are probably the, the one of the most important ones. Are there any questions so far? No. No question. And I know Crystal's microphone is not working the best. Uh, no questions. Okay. Um, so let, let's go through a little bit about uh, Keep uh, CRM. Now, of course, if you've got active uh, active campaign, Mailchimp, or um, Constant Contact, or any of those other ones, uh, they're going to be doing something similar, but they'll just be a slightly different design. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my uh, uh, into my Keep 
uh, uh, program. So then we go here. So KEAP is, is the one that I use, KEAP.com. Now, for those of you who have been in business for a while, I want to say a while, I'm going to say like say five or 10 years, they used to be called uh, Infusionsoft. Now, Infusionsoft was, was a very expensive program, a very ex expensive platform uh, and CRM. I think back when I first heard about it, they were charging either between twelve to $1,700 a month. Uh, and the platform. So it, it was extremely powerful and it was also uh, extremely uh, expensive. Um, and and it was, uh, and I actually just saw somebody use the original version uh, yesterday or la uh, last week. One of the things that they, they talked about in Fusionsoft because it was so complex that people that were using it uh, had it nicknamed it and called it Confusionsoft because it was so complicated. Uh, when uh, when this lady showed me how how Infusionsoft works now, I I, I can I'm a very a fairly technical person, and I saw just how technical that was. Like that would drive me nuts. Uh, so anyway, uh, just just go ahead and go into Keep. I'm going to log in, and then I have uh, two accounts uh, here. Now uh, oops, I got to enter a code. So let me get that code. Okay, the code, the one-time code is, okay, there we go. And I'm gonna skip the name of the browser. And I have two I have two accounts. One is the Optimal Performance Academy, which is my TAR516. And then I have this other one called GTS 786. Now, if you decide that you want to use Keep and uh, and I'll show you how, you, and, and you use my, um, affiliate link, uh, then I can I can create things and put them into the sandbox. And then I can share that with anybody that actually uses my affiliate link. So this could be like uh, campaigns, landing pages, and things along those lines. But anyway, I'm going to go, in, go into my main account. Okay. So on the left-hand side here, we, we, we will see that we have a home. Uh, that's where your dashboard is. Contacts, your calendar, communications, sales, marketing, automations, and reports. So right now, as you can see, I'm under contacts and it has people. Uh, we I have 151 contacts in here. Um, these are anybody that's uh, at the time of this recording that's actually signed up for one of my events or um, that went to one of our webinars, our workshops, or uh, any uh, any of those, or or people who actually um, is scheduled on my calendar. Now, I, when, you, when you're when you creating your account, you've got the people, you can also do companies, and you can do groups. We also have tags, custom fields, uh, forms. This is going to be like internal and, and external forms. Public forms are going to be forms that you can um, um, uh, put out, uh, you know, put out on your website and internal forms are, are internal to uh, keep itself. And then we have automations. Now, this is where most of your, if you're going to be doing uh, any kind of CRM work, this is where you can probably be doing most of your, uh, of your stuff. Now we have uh, uh, easy, uh, easy automations and advanced automations. Um, I don't use many easy auto, uh, automations because these are just like one or two step uh, things. Uh, I usually use advanced just because it is uh, actually a, a little bit uh, more appealing. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start getting into a little bit on landing pages uh, for this recording. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the, the business Kickstarter workshop that's coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and, and I'm going to hit the edit button. So uh, sequences are, are are very, very important how you do things. Now, how this one works is I've got a landing page, and this is the one that I'm promoting right now, is a, it's to enroll in the Business Kickstarter workshop for $197. I also have to uh, have one through another landing page to enroll in, into the Business Kickstarter workshop for only $97. So these are two standalone uh, landing pages. And what a landing page is, a landing page is essentially a page that people will go to that that has the only has only one call to action. If you go to my website, uh, in, uh, um, let's go to my homepage uh, on my website, you will see that this is a normal website. It's got a schedule a thirty minute discovery session, which is a clickable link to my calendar. 
I can scroll down here, uh, schedule another 30 minute link uh, there. If I could scroll down even further, learn more about our coaching programs, our courses, and our uh, workshops. So right now, there's four different call to actions uh, right there. And if you look at the very, very top, I've got a whole, I've got 20 plus more call to actions all across the top. So that is what a web a web page is. What a landing page is, it actually has, it does not have this menu on top. And it only has, and it should only have one call to action. So let me open up uh, a, a link real quick, and I will show you what a typical landing page looks like. Let me go here. And get, uh, I've got to get some URLs, so I'm going to open up some of my spreadsheets. So here's the keep landing page for the $97 one. I'm going to control C, go back to, I don't need it open anymore, so I'm going to minimize it. Oops, wrong one. And I'll, open, I'll go over here, and I'll put control V, and I'll, put, I, I'll go in there. So this is this is a landing page. As you'll see across the top, there is no menu button. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit, I've got this uh, reserve my spot for for ninety seven dollars, and then I can I'll scroll down again and I reserve my spot. Here it is on Saturday, October twenty first at eleven to seven or eight to four Pacific. And again, who should attend? So it gives a lot a lot of information. Has a video embedded in on it, and. Uh, and the, now I do have another, I should probably take this one off. Uh, th that's a second call to action. So that's not very good to have that on there. Um, but if they do go, if they do go here, it's going to go to the page that uh, on my website that this workshop is talked about. And that's where they will buy it for $795. So that, that's kind of the reason I have it on there or they can, or they can, uh, just get more information. And then, of course, you know, some testimonials. So that this is what a landing page looks like. Now, th there's basically there's two types of landing pages. This one is be there's what's called a short form landing page. And then there's also no, uh, what is known as a long form landing page. This would be a more of a medium to long form because uh, you you scroll down a lot. A short form landing page would probably uh, this this uh, side this sidebar would probably be uh, covering at least. 70 to 90%, if not 100% of your screen. So a short form may only have what you see on your screen with, with, those, uh, with those side scroll bar. Um, so it's up to you, uh, which one do you like to do? I know you mentioned about an upcoming event. And if you were going to be doing, uh, say, a Facebook ads or anything like that, you will probably want to have two variations of an ad, one going to a long form landing page and one going to a short form landing page to see which one works better. Because um, whenever you are putting together landing pages, you definitely want to have, and if you're going to be doing paid ads, you want to know what's going to be working and what does not work. So th th that is very, very, very important to know. For an example, if I, uh, I could um, have a, a little bit more information or put a video over here where, I, where these words are uh, uh, under the uh, the red, excuse me, the purple um, button with a video talking about what the event is. And then somebody, they can go in and just uh, click on that. And there's nothing else that they, there's not going to be anything else below uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this shaded in, uh, image. Um, so that's, that is what a landing page looks like. So what this is here, it's going back into the automation. Um, I have <clears throat> that they're going to go into this, uh, this green, uh, what you want to call it, this green uh, rectangle. What this here is, is this is going to be my email sequence that I'm going to be sending out to them. Now, I have up here a, a reminder to update, update my merge fields. And essentially, I'm going to go up under actions, go here where it says merge fields. And then I have the, the date of the workshop is October 21st. And the time is 11, uh, between 11 and 7, 8 to 3. I'm going to go ahead and edit this one. And I'm going to put the word Saturday in front of it. Actually, no, because uh, yeah, because this is just a Saturday, October third, October twenty third, twenty first. Hit the save button, and I, then I had I'll hit the close button. So now I'm uh, so I've updated I've updated my the, the, the date. So on October twenty second, if I decide to have another one, say uh, the week before Christmas or maybe early January, then I can just go and do this sequence, and I can still use all of this information that I've already had. I'll just have to go and update the uh, I'll just have to go and update these uh, this text inside uh, the, the the landing pages. So I'm going to go inside this one. So this is this is the sequence. 
Um, we, we're going to start the sequence. I'm, I have no time delay. So once they uh, once they have put put in their information, they will this uh, this con the person is going to be assigned to me. That's where you'll see that there. I'm going to give them three tags. In this particular case, I'm giving them, they bought the BK workshop, they registered for an event, and they registered for XYZ event. And I, these are done for, for several different reasons. I'll add a note to their file, and then they'll get this email. And um, so at this point in time, there's they'll get this email that's, uh, that I'll read to you in a moment. And I've got my my logo uh, up on top. Hello, contact first name. That's just how um, Keith uh, names their first name. Congratulations on investing in our business keys or workshop. You, you may be you will be notified by emails the next uh, the, uh, to, uh, to the next step in attending our, our next workshop. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Here's the date and time for your event. So date of workshop, time of workshop. Those are the two merge fields that I just updated. So and then also here is the um, and and. And essentially, uh, what I have it is once somebody pays for the workshop, I'm giving them a second ticket for free. So this is the inter the internal form that they'll click on to register their friend to come to the workshop. And then here's the rest of the email. My closing statement is usually until then uh, be amazing. That's how I usually close uh, close off all of my stuff. And then uh, with key, you have the automatic uh, unsubscribe button. You can't take this out. And if you get any email that 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 you did that you did not sign up for, that word that does not have an un unsubscribe button, you, most likely that they're not in, compl in compliance with the FCC. And the last thing you want to do is uh, is to have a complaint with the FCC, especially if you have, have have a license of some sort, like a mortgage or real estate or anything like that. Right, so make sure right. that unsubscribe button uh, uh, is there. Now, one of the things I sometimes like to do, I, I like to get fancy uh, with the unsubscribe. So this is just part of the email campaign. So I'm just going to uh, click on that. And now uh, this little field just came up on the right hand side. This is additional footer text. Un, uh, this will be a, extra text that, that I can add uh, uh, that's going to be on top of the unsubscribe button. And then anything that I want to say before the unsubscribe button and whatever I want to say after. So usually I would say something like, um, we hate to see you go, but we know that you can at any time. So I know the word unsubscribe is going to follow the can, and it's going to uh, be in front of the at the time, uh, at any time, as you can see uh, it right there. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the next button because we're done. We're now done with this email. You want to say who is it coming from? Who is it going to? You know what? You know what field that you have for their email campaign, and then this is going to be the subject line, and then this is going to be the preview text. Now let me see. I'm going to open up my email tool as an example. So you will see right there. That there is the let's say a gratitude heart yoga. That's who it's coming from. The subject line is yoga 4:45 at 6 p.m. And then there is going to hey hey y'all uh, hope uh, hope and Heather and which would be the same thing. Here's the subject line up uh, up there. And then the um, uh, hey, hey y'all uh, hope uh, hope and Heather and that's going to be their um, uh, their, their preview text uh, right there. And here's an example of an email that I send myself. Uh, this was the reminder that was 30 minutes prior to this call that that, that came that goes out. So, so there's my logo. Hey, uh, hello, Kevin. Because I'm sending it, to, I'm sending it to myself. Uh, we are starting in only 30 minutes. That this is going to be fun and educational. As you can see, it says 2:30 p.m. Here are the details for your course. Introduction to keep CRM landing pages. Tuesday, 3 of uh, 4 p.m. Uh, 12 to 1:30 um, uh, uh, p.m. And then here's the link. So this is this is an exact uh, email um, that that was part of an automation. I'm going to go and close that back out and hit done. So what happens next is uh, in the sequence is this is the if they don't click on something they will get this reminder to have their their guest sign up. Now the, when the guest signs up they're going to be tagged at a slightly different tag. When that tag occurs this when this this sequence will begin because the, the, the tag just suddenly got applied. This is going to be a, a BKW uh, guest. Then this sequence will go and the guest will get this email. And then everybody goes about, uh, goes into the next uh, part of the sequence. Then let's say uh, right before the event, they will get this email one week prior, the day prior and morning of uh, reminders. So 
This is very important whenever you are uh, setting up your uh, your calendars is, to all, is always to have them get reminders. You can also put in uh, texting reminders as well. And then th th this one here just says, hey, they clicked on this link here or any, uh, any of the three links here, which has the, the thing in it. This this event will occur. And that, that way I now know that they at least uh, clicked on the link to attend the event. Now, did they stay for the entire time? I do not know. But then the sequence, this, the, the, the email sequence or the sequence that happens after uh, is when all those tags are going to be removed from them. So they no longer they're no longer in that campaign. Uh, so this is this is why uh, CRMs are so important is so that you can automate all of this entire process. Again, these are called journeys in MailChimp. Uh, but that is that is just a simple example of a uh, somebody signs up for a class and then they're getting reminders along the way. Uh, any questions at this point in time? No, and you said this is a MailChimp CRM that you were using, or is this the Kim? I hear your microphone going up and down, but I, I don't see, I don't hear your voice at all. Hello? Uh, let, me, let me see if, it, if it's my speakers. My, my. No. Okay. Um. Okay. So anyway, I'm gonna go and hide hide these menus. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish so that uh, so that any changes that I, that I made are are going to be uh, kept. And it looks like I got all green air or all green check marks. I'm gonna say everything is okay. Everything's connected. And then of course you get the uh, your data and your uh, reporting here. I don't need to. Look at that right now. So um, just as a, as a, I'll show you another one. This is the, another the Tuesday training one. This is the email that I just showed you. This is a, is a much shorter uh, sequence. Um, so this is basically to say, hey, you typed in a, a, a Tuesday, and then also you, uh, your uh, this you, you'll get that tag uh, as part of the sign up process. And this will start up that whenever you are, uh, whenever Tuesday uh, project tags, uh, Tuesday uh, gets tagged to somebody, this one will automatically fire. And then it will go into an email sequence. This is a uh, wait at least five minutes and then run it any Monday on or about uh, two o'clock. So I know this is going to be happening on a Monday. The, my Tuesday events are on Tuesdays. And then this will be the one day reminder. And then this the this now as the is the, is the clock. This is a thirty minute reminder. So this that email. This is going to open up the thirty minute uh, email, as an example. And let me go back and open up my mail tool. So you see, uh, we are starting in only thirty minutes. Here are the details for your convenience and uh, name of the name of the event, the day, the time, and the link. Now you will notice this is 437-137-8640, which is my standard uh, Zoom link. And then you will see here, name of the event, the day, the time, and the Zoom link. This, uh, if I decided I wanted uh, the, too many people had that Zoom link, I could go to Zoom since I have a paid version. I can change my link. And all I have to do here is go to the merge field and update uh, uh, that one right there to change that. Um, and then I talked about the, the classroom there. And there's the classroom there. So you um, normally an email should only have one call to action in it, just like a landing page. Uh, but this one has two, for whatever reason. So th that that is how uh, those kinds of sequences work. And I, I and as you can see, I'm sending out three emails in this sequence. I'm sending out um, the the Monday email. The, uh, the morning of, like I said, nine o'clock. Uh, this runs at any time at nine a.m. and then this one uh, runs at two thirty uh, uh, Eastern time. And then after uh, the after they get that thirty minute reminder, then they will uh, get their tag removed. So so that's done there. So I made a change. Just go ahead and, and do that. So this is one of the reasons as you're building your business, you need the CRM because this once you build this, uh, all of the all of the other stuff is uh, is handled for you. Let me see here. Now we're going to go ahead and look at landing pages. Uh, now, there are uh, places like landingpages.com. There's other websites out there. Is this MailChimp? No, this is Key. This is, uh, this is Key. 
I, I no longer have a Mailchimp account. I, I let that uh, that account go a few years ago. Um, okay. Now let's let's go to Keep as an or excuse me, Mailchimp as an example. Uh, you can do a, a, a free trial. Oh, it looks like Mailchimp is now paid. <laughs> it used to be free for the first one thousand people. Let me see what the pricing is. Oh, wow. Okay, so they they still have a free account. Easily create uh, email uh, campaigns to learn more about your customers. Um, I don't know what it all includes because their 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 little pricing thing doesn't doesn't hide. So you only can read uh, two lines at a time. Um, let me see. Monthly send. Okay, yes. Yeah, so Looks like you can still send out one thousand emails a month with no jump. Um, but th their process is going is it's going to be somewhat similar. Um, and Mailchimp is a great one to get started with, uh, um, just to get started. It looks like they will, they will only uh, give you assistance for your first uh, thirty days, so they have become a lot more restrictive uh, in, in their in their stuff. Uh, I they also have a, a landing page builder. I just didn't like it. In all honesty, it was too it was very very complicated, and I just I I, I just didn't like it. I I did go to uh, standard. I was a standard user for a couple of years. Uh, which does do, do, uh, do the landing pages and the journeys, uh, while this does not. On this one, you could send out um, emails, like I say, a scheduled email. I believe you could send out a sequence of emails. I believe you could, um, I, but I don't know if they. Again, I don't know what their uh, processes are now because I'm no, I'm no longer an account user. And they sent me an email about two months ago saying I had not been active for two years. If I wasn't going to be active, they're going to to delete my account, and uh, I wasn't active. Um, so now, now, uh, Crystal, are you interested in doing any kind of uh, online courses or or anything like that? I probably would be. Um, I just gotta go on there. And I'll, kind I'll give you a moment to either can. unmute yourself or type. I still can't hear you. <laughs> no, nothing. Yeah, I know you're driving. It might be how your microphone is set up on Zoom. Yeah, it's weird, on Zoom on the lower left hand corner, you click on the microphone, the little arrow, and it will say which microphone are you using. You may be connected to something like a headphone or something. Okay. No, I'm connected to the car. Yeah, the car. Hello? Can you, can you hear me better? Oh my gosh, so much better. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh. Um, I mean, you're actually coming in clear. First of all, I was like, I want to I hear a couple of syllables, but now, yeah, you're coming in, you're coming in clear. Clear. Yeah, I don't know. At first, I, I mean, I was on my um, car speaker. Um, and now I forgot what I was asked. What I what, I forgot what I was saying. What, did you ask me a question? Oh, you did. Um, I said, yeah, I was. Um, I am interested. I just got to see what all you have on there to kind of see what would apply to me because I know you do a variety of things for a different type of business people. So, um, well, yes, I mean, because do you know what a lead magnet is? Do. What what you say, Kevin? Do you know what a lead magnet is? No, I, I've heard a lot about it the past couple of weeks, but I don't really know what it is per se. Well, a, a lead magnet is a uh, is is a item that you give away for free or for a very low cost that will attract a lead into your system. That's like one of the reasons why you have landing pages. Um, so, like, say, let's say you have an event that's coming up, and you, you want you you want to give them maybe a little content flyer, you know, like a three page, five page, ten page uh, PDF that describes some of the stuff that you're going to be uh, um, uh, uh, talking about at the event, so that could help them out, and that and then they will sign up, and and then you automatically send them an email, uh, part of your uh, part of your campaign to uh, here's 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 the location of that lead magnet so that, so that they can uh, download it. Okay. 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 So, 
So uh, I would definitely, uh, you know, being a realtor uh, and, and, or whatever other business that you're wanting to do, having a lead magnet is extremely powerful. Here, here's okay. an example. Uh, I went to the RAR, uh, uh, you belong here, Expo. I was one of the uh, affiliates that, that uh, had a table at that event a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll show this to you. I'm going to hit edit. And I had a QR code um, uh, on uh, on uh, you know on an eight and a half by eleven uh, piece of paper where they could uh, uh, scan it. You know, they, they could scan it with their phone, and once they scan it with their phone they, and they're putting their their names and their emails, um, they would actually uh, go through the, the this process. So, for an example, here's uh, here's the uh, here's the the the, the um, here, here here was the 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 landing page. That they would that they would go to, and essentially what I was doing was I would you know I was wanting to collect their names and emails so I could put them on an email list, and it says right. here uh, get your get your copy today, uh, uh, download your copy of a Realtor's Guide to Success in Real Estate now and start earning the profits you deserve as well as serve your clients in the best possible way. Here is the lead magnet itself. Uh, it was a Realtor's Guide to Sales, uh, it, so they hit the Download uh, Now button, and or excuse me, they would uh, download now. They put in their first name, they put in their email, and they would uh, and they would uh, be submitted. Now, what happens after this? Um, the next uh, the, the the next thing that they see on their screen can be one of a couple of different things. It could be that they're going to a checkout form, or it could be they were there. Um, uh, they they would get a thank you page. Um, so let me go here. Next, publish. Actually, get scroll down. So, so I will go to the form, and essentially, uh, the, the form's name is a realtor's guide. And then, as I scroll down, the, once they click on the button, this is his go to a landing sub page, and this is going to go to uh, th uh, this page here. And uh, well, actually, this is supposed to be a thank you page. And um, and then and then um, I I'll, I'll just hit that, hit that button and what what what's going to happen at that point in time and this is something you really need to know especially if you're going to be starting to do ads um, mm -hmm. is, is that you know where are they going you get the URL here and where are they going and then once they click on your on your page you know, where are they going after that so I'm going to click out and click from there so from there that they were they're getting this uh, sequence that comes after runs at any time, gives, assigns it to me, apply, give them a tag, and then they will get um, this uh, email that's that would say, uh, congratulations, first name. Here's your copy of a Realtor's Guide to Success in Real Estate. Just click on this URL. And if I were to copy that URL, you will see that it's, uh, my website uh, is, is part of it because you know, me having a, a WordPress website. Mm -hmm. Oops. So and I've I've cre I've created a landing page, but I never seen one with a. You said yours has a sub sub landing page. Is that because of the CRM that you're using, or do, do no, most of them that I? Because I mean, I, I there's one there's a couple of things I, that I could do. I could have them go directly to this link, so this this will this will show up on their screen for them to download. I don't suggest that, but you could have them do that, or uh, you could. Um, have them go to uh, a a sub page or or a thank you page. So let me. It's been a while since I've done with this. Um, where did it? Okay, I'm gonna go back and um, I'm in, I'm in the wrong place. That's that's the problem. I'm, I'm gonna make sure that this um, control A.
Okay, because so because right now what, what I can have them do, I can have them go to a web a website, another uh, section on this page, go to another landing page, a landing sub page, go to a booking link, or go to a checkout form. So that's going to be the next thing that they see on their screen, and I, I right. and I rather them get uh, get the link. Uh, for the uh, PDF uh, in their email. That way I could check, I could uh, check making sure that they're opening their emails. Uh, gotcha. I, 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 I will see that. Okay. So that, okay. so, cause that, cause that's the, because that's the next, because you, you will have to have something that this, something else has to show up on the screen. Um, oftentimes uh, I use, which is just a thank you page. And it would just go to another page of like a very simplified version of this. And where they where they will say, well, thank you for download. Uh, thank you for um, uh, uh, getting your free copy of this course or this book. Uh, uh, please make sure to check your email. And that's that, that'll be basically the only thing that it will say on that page. OK, OK. OK, does that, make, does that make sense? Yeah, I just have I guess the, the version that I'm using to create my landing pages, I guess I just have to see how to configure it to. Um, I don't know how to configure it to do. I've never seen that option to 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 Where do like thank you so, emails or to. Okay, so like here uh, down here, I went down to pages. I didn't see it before, but landing page, and then I can have them go to a thank you page, and here's what the thank you page would say: um, Your free ebook is in your inbox. Try to check your email. And then a little bit about us, but I, I'm not using this one because I would I would have changed the logo up there, but that's what a, a thank you page could look like. It just tells okay. them to go check your the, the call to action in this is to go check your email. Okay, and you're doing this in keep keep or yes, is a keep you know. has his own landing pages integrated inside of his platform, so I don't have to use like a Mailchimp and then get a zap. Uh, from Zapier to, to go to landingpages.com. So that's okay. the, that's the whole reason I like Keep because everything is integrated with with inside of itself, and there's no chance for miscommunication, especially if let's say uh, um, uh, Zapier or landingpages.com updated their services. Now you got to go fix that Zap because it's no longer working again. Said so I'd rather have it all in in, in one location. Oh, wow. That's that's my own personal uh, thing about it. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the main reasons I left uh, uh, Mailchimp as well is it, things where I, I, was, I just was not being able to figure out how to integrate uh, these things for, uh, uh, with each other. And again, you'll see the landing pages has no other menus at the very top like a web page would. Right. Okay. And the okay. the website landing are there multiple pay, uh, sites that you can get landing pages from? Um, I. I, well, I use WordPress and I had a WordPress landing page as well as part of my thing, but I just could not get it to work. For an example, I, I would go to the page itself to work on it, but only half the page would show up. And, and, it, oh. and the bottom half, you know, you know we, we, uh, I could never get it to work. And I spent probably oh. more than a month trying to figure that out. Oh, my um, goodness. The, I mean, because it was like, it was so frustrating. <laughs> Right, because <laughs> um, I'm I'm fairly tech savvy, and that was still confusing the heck out of me. But uh, but I use WordPress, which sometimes uh, plugins don't like uh, talking with each other. You know, like okay. uh, you know, like apps may not. Sometimes when you download apps on your cell phone, they may not uh, behave very well with each other. <laughs> gotcha. So okay. And you said another one was landing. Was it landingpages.com? I think that is um this this. I don't know if that I, I just I'm not sure if that um the one that KW has has the uh the all those options in there. No, no because uh, if you're using a KW uh thing, you're not going to most likely you're not like you're not going to be able to customize your page uh, very much because you you will have to go uh, um, uh, um adhere to the standards that uh, that they that they have. But if you go out and get your own URL, uh, you know, do, do you have your own website? The, not KW website, but do you have your own website? I do have my own website, but I, it's just that, my own website. I haven't really done anything to it. I bought it from Google and that's about it. <laughs> 
Okay. So whenever you are, um, uh, you know, I, I, so I have two websites. Obviously, you've seen this one already, the, the Optimal Performance Academy. I've got another one that's uh, that I'm not really using. It's more for my speaker stuff. So it's kevinadunlap.com. Mm -hmm. This one is also a WordPress website. Um, okay. So, and I, uh, so that, that's that's just uh, mine here. Um, I used to have um, a, a couple of other ones. If I were to go to, if I had to go to Google, and I'm going to show you something that a lot of you are not uh, aware of. Wayback machine. And way uh, with the Wayback Machine, you can go mm -hmm. and uh, type in a URL, and then you pick a time uh, in the past to see what was, what was what was going on at at a, at a very specific uh, time, uh, date or date and time. So my previous company was called TridentInvestmentsLLC.com. I still have the URL, but I'm, I'm not using it. So uh, if I go back and uh, do my uh, uh, browse uh, my history. And uh, I, I stopped really doing real estate in 2020. So Trident was really no longer uh, being needed. But if I, I, I go back and look at my website, back when it looked like, say, in 2008, on March the 9th at, uh, at 22 minutes after 22 minutes and seven seconds after midnight, and, and go and look at my, uh, see what my website looked like uh, back then. Oh, wow. Um, so. Now this is th my my website was pretty ugly back then, but um, <laughs> I was I was still learning how to how, how to yeah I'm not gonna go with that one. Let's go with a different date. <laughs> and going up here, there's 173 captures oh, uh, wow. on here. Um, so I picked whatever one that I picked. Um, this was my this was my main website. I tried to invest in LLC dot com. Uh, go to my lease option program. And then these were, um, okay, that's not working. Okay, so I've got a, a little hiccup there. So, because I was trying to serve uh, some of these in, in other cities uh, doing this. Okay, let's just go back to Wayback Machine. Okay, let's say 2013. Pick uh, July 25th at 9.44 in the morning. So every website is is uh, uh, can be seen here. Oh, okay. So, and, I, and so I was, I was trying to get it started in Phoenix as well, but I just uh, click on Las Vegas. Here we go. So this is this is why uh, this is this was my Google rich page here. Um, so essentially, I broke the city down into uh, uh, A through J uh, as far as uh, locations. And then this was, mm -hmm. was my, these are all my houses that, that I was representing for lease options. Red means that, that it's sold. Um, green means that the price change. Yellow means that it was new. And purple means that's uh, it's contract uh, pending. So I could go here and. Um, um, and that will pull up uh, uh, in a moment. But these are all the things I was doing before I was a a, a realtor. Um, it okay. may not be it may, it, so. Th so this is you know, like if you are. I think I may have told you about this at, at the NC RIA meeting. Is to have you you know about having your own website. You need it to be active, and then uh, seeing about uh, creating your own marketing campaigns for your uh, for all the. Uh, uh, Keller Williams properties in, at your brokerage. So, okay. Um, so this, so then, yeah, like this, 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 so you were telling this, me about the GPT. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, this is way before uh, Chat GPT, but this is what uh, this is how I, I, I ended up being uh, number one on Google for 
several years for keywords like lease option Las Vegas is because I've got a new house. I would have lease option in here. I go shoot a video on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It will, it would link uh, to the website here. This thing also linked uh, to other, uh, to other places. And then, you know, I had all my images and things like that. Okay. Um, so and I did, I did this for, um, for uh, before I was a realtor, I did this for over eight years. I actually did it for like 14 years. This is, this is my whole uh, form of income. Was that? And oh, wow. um, the reason I'm uh, the reason I'm talking about that is, you know, by ha by having these uh, here, um, or excuse me, by having you know, by having a website that's going to dramatically increase your 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 online presence. Mm -hmm. um, another right. thing was that. Um, let me go back. Let's go to my other website that I had back then. Uh, rent. To I think it was rent to own lv.com. This was a, a light blue website. Uh, let's go to 2016, March 4th at 7 12 at night. And th this website I gave up like six years ago. Yep, uh, that, that was mine. <laughs> so that was my rent on Las Vegas uh, uh, website as well. And if you could go here, that would take you. To, if you're looking at the URL in the lower left hand corner, you will see that uh, you see a, a web archive web 2016, blah, 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 HTTP uh, colon four slash four slash www.tridentinvestmentsllc.com four slash homes four slash uh, Las Vegas. So that's. Um, so I was running this website as well as well. And this is something that I would suggest for people that are realtors is to create a website. You know, and then you tell people about what you do. And then uh, and obviously it needs, it needs to be approved by your broker because you're, you're doing uh, real estate stuff on there. Um, but uh, start advertising homes and such so that you so that you start building a, a a web presence. Okay. That the this is probably one of the most important things uh, for, in my opinion, for realtors to do outside of going to kellerwilliams.com forward slash realtor forward slash, um, you know, crystal and whatever your last name, crystal middle initial last name, you know, which okay. is, which is going to be your basic uh, Keller Williams or any brokerage uh, website. I mean, I, back when I was a, a licensed realtor, I worked for, for a company called TR Realty. I have no idea what TR stands for. Because the the name of the broker was Brad Robertson, <laughs> but oh, um, wow. um, but uh, I I had my own website with them as well, and I also had my own web, website with the MLS. But that was very very generic, and you you couldn't change anything on there. Oh, okay. Now with the M, you said you had your website with the MLS. How did you how did you do that? I mean, think the I think there was one with the MLS. I know I had one with TR Realty. And then, of course, I had my 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 um, realtor.com accounts as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Because so. I was, you know, I, I started the, um, well, I bought the uh, website on Google. So, you know, mm -hmm. like if I ever decided to, if I decided to leave KW, you know, I, I would have something, you know, of my own. And you know, when we say you bought it on Google. You mean you bought it on GoDaddy? No, um, I I do have one. I have one on GoDaddy too, but I haven't done anything with it. But I I bought one on Google. Google. I just went to Google and bought a web 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 page website. Uh huh. Okay. Here, because here, 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 here are the things. If you are, if you don't use Keep or you decide to you know, go with another landing page uh, provider, you want to make sure that they do in, uh, integrate well with everybody. Um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, and I would highly recommend, uh, depending how tech savvy you are, is um, creating a, a word uh, have 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 your website as a WordPress website. I mean, it is a little more complicated, and it, it, and it can crash sometimes. But the, the, mm -hmm. the fun, but the functionality of your uh, website will be a lot lot stronger. For an example, because here here's WordPress. This is the, this is the backbones of my website. If I go over here with these pages that I just clicked on, I know I've mm -hmm. got right now fifty nine pages. 
on my website. And the only reason I have so many is I, I have pages for every course that I have, every program, uh, every uh, coaching program that I have, every workshop that I do. All of them have their own pages or or, or, their, inform or their information pages. I also wow. do posts, uh, a blog post, and I don't have to worry about going to another website and trying to integrate it somewhere else. It's all on my website. Another okay. thing that I, I, I have that is very, very helpful is because I like to having control over things. So when people are coming to my website and, and, and me directing people, uh, mm -hmm. it's something called, uh, known as, a, it's called Pretty Links. I absolutely, this is one of the most simple uh, plugins or apps out there, but it's also to me one of the most powerful. I love this thing here. I don't know how many I have. I have 69 links in here. And basically what, what it is is, um, is let's say I wanted you to go to my course. Uh, I, I don't need this one. Let's, let's say I was going to have you go to my course. Um, it doesn't matter which one, curriculum, uh, all courses. I'll, I'll scroll to the bottom uh, for the online program. Um, so I'll hit the, uh, the learn more. Mm -hmm. You will see the URL is a fairly long one. OptimalPerformanceAcademy.org forward slash online dash classes dash online dash program dash dash mm -hmm. creator. That's the URL. However, because of pretty links, I can go to uh, Optimal Performance Academy. Now I've got it set up this way because you know, I have to do it myself. I put in mm -hmm. uh, OPC, just the, just the initials of the program. I'll click on that and I will say, and notice it redirected them to this uh, this website there. So for me, for advertising purposes or whatever, uh, these uh, these pretty links will, will send them anywhere. So for an example, I'm going to OPC, hit, hit search. And I'm looking for the one over here on the right-hand side. So if I go in under here and hit uh, edit, here's the name. This is gonna be a permanent redirect. Here is the URL that is going to, and here's the URL, uh, here are the, the letters and numbers and whatever that I want to use. So it is so, I mean, such a simple program, but it does so powerful. For an example, we talked about earlier, like, hey, this, this, um, let's do a discovery uh, call for everybody that attends this, uh, this, this class. So if I go here and I type in uh, discovery, it's actually going to do a redirect to keep. It's, it's going to my keep calendar. So I don't have to uh, memorize all of this. I just say, uh, I just have that as a redirect. So most other websites, if you build on other platforms, you're not going to have that ability. Like if you go to the Zoom chat, you'll see I have coffee uh, that I asked for you to do. So I'm going to go ahead and move the chat over so you can see it. I'm going to hit, hit, hit coffee. Um, this just popped up in another screen. And you'll see that this is this is uh, for the coffee. Uh, you can see over there, select the time, uh, Coffee with Optimal Performance Academy. Now, this is for a one-hour meeting, while the discovery call is a 30-minute meeting. So that, that's, this is why I do some of the things I, uh, that I do. And all of this is uh, is done through, uh, uh, in this case, uh, through Key. So I can go over here where it says my day. A lot of people, they'll go and get a Calendly uh, account um, because they can you know, set up a one calendar for free that connects to their uh, Google Calendar. I right now have, uh, we've got the discovery call there. After that one, like that's, uh, let's say we only talk about uh, you know what is it you're doing. Then I could do a 30 minute follow-up call uh, which is for the, um, uh, you know, for our follow-up where I talk about my programs. Here is the first link that, that I sent you to Zoom. That's for us to do a Zoom link, and this will create a Zoom unique uh, code. If you want to talk about uh, uh, getting a Keep account, we will do this as well. This will also get a Zoom code. There's the coffee calendar as well. And then oh. I have, besides the 30-minute discovery session, I also have a 60-minute uh, strategy session, which is basically the same thing. But this one will send out an email uh, where they will ask you like uh, 12 or 13 questions. I can go ahead and hit edit. And it will send out um, uh, a, a sequence of emails that's going to be a part of this uh, part of this easy automation there. And then what that what happens there is I can I, I will go to myself as a as an example.
Okay, I think it's, it's the Trident one. I'll go and uh, over here for info, and then uh, the questionnaire that I asked. Here, here's all the answers. So all of them are integrated uh, together. This okay. is why I mean, like, if you're using Calendly, that's fine. But uh, but are you going to be able to get all the all of this additional information? Right, right. And then let's say for another good thing I like about it is I, I can look at the tags that I have, and let's say manage all tags. Oh, wrong, wrong place. Um, I'm going to scroll down emails. I can, I can see all the emails that I've sent to myself. I can see all the automations uh, that, that are applied here. Here, I've, here's, uh, I've got 15 or 18 tags on myself because I use myself by Trident account as my default account. Te text messages, notes, sales. Um, anytime I have a discovery call uh, with somebody, um, let me think of somebody. Oh, I did not realize she was on there. Uh, let's talk. Let's do. Uh, let's do Kurt. I can go under here, and we, we did a discovery call with him, and uh, I can look at my notes uh, uh, that I took with him, and because and they're okay. This way, I just purchased the BKW workshop, so that was, that was a note that was automatically uh, generated, and that note was generated on, on August thirtieth. So all of this stuff is all part of keep, and, and, and most standard CRMs you will have this. So this is. I mean, this is the power of. Of uh, of picking something like that, um, if you if you go with a Mailchimp or Active uh, Active Campaign or a Constant Contacts, make sure that it has uh, uh, the, the, the all of these features. Otherwise, if they don't, then either you're going to have to be paying more, or you're going to have to be paying uh, going to Zap and trying to find a Zap that connects them to, uh, the two together. And not everything's going to be stored in one place. Now, the last thing I, I, oh. I, I'd like to do is um, uh, go to we already in our automations. Um, marketing and checkout forms, and I and I create my own checkout forms. So here's the BKW for one ninety seven, and here uh, and BKW uh, BKW or BK Workshop Virtual is the one that's for the ninety seven. Okay, um, I, you were. Let me see. I, I heard you say there's two two different workshops. One is one ninety seven, and one is ninety seven. Through the same workshop, uh, it normally sells for seven ninety five, um, but right now, I'm, I'm, since we 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 just had it, so I I'm running uh, uh, advertising on LinkedIn right now. The, the, the workshop is for one ninety seven, and they will get to bring somebody for free. However, if you go to the uh, 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 one of the uh, webinars and you stay for the whole thing, I'll give you the link for the ninety seven dollar one. And but and they're the exact same sequence. It's just they're, they're just coming in at slightly different uh, uh, angles. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And let me uh, and with me having uh, when I talk to you about courses. Okay, so here's a uh, here's my uh, online uh, program created for five ninety seven, and then I also have it for uh, for ninety seven. Um, I'm not running either one. I'm, I'm not running the ninety seven campaign right now. But if you go to my website and you were to click on the um, uh, the online program creator that we that we saw a couple of times, you will go into this exact uh, checkout form. Now, what I have as well uh, have done is uh, where's this integrations? Where's integrations? Maybe settings. Okay. And I go under integrations. Um, you will see that. Uh, I'm glad I went there. Uh, I'm going to worry about that later. Oh, where was <laughs> I? Okay, well, I just got lost. Okay, um, so I'll go back. Um, well, you will see that you can uh, integrate your. Um, um, I've got Zoom uh, connected on here as well, so it's connected, and I'm also using Stripe. So when it, so Keep is not processing the, the the credit card. Stripe is, and then Stripe is the one that's going to uh, uh, pay me. You know, like say two or three days uh, later. 
but I, I but I, I don't have to uh, worry about um, uh, you know using Zaps uh, to, uh, to integrate. Everything is inside one program. Okay. Let's. I guess let's teach. Them. What's that? And you don't have. I said, I guess it it makes it easier. It's less tedious if you have it all integrated in in one spot versus having exactly. it separate. Now there are a couple of things that I don't like about Key right, uh, right now. Number one is they they don't allow for uh, coupon codes, or at least the, the the version of Key that I have, because there's three versions. There is a uh, what they call um, uh, uh, Keep Pro, Keep Max, and then uh, Keep Max, Max Classic. Now, Max Classic is just a rename of Infusionsoft. So, it, so the the original Infusionsoft is still around. They, they just call it now Max Classic. I have the Pro version, and there's two things that I, that they don't allow me to do uh, at my level. Uh, one is I cannot uh, use coupons. So, for an example, you know, if I was going to say uh, instead of seven ninety five, put in this code and you'll get it for ninety seven dollars. You can't do that. You have to create a completely de a different checkout form. The second thing I don't like about my version of Keep is that uh, it does not allow for an a, a, an affiliate partnership. So if I had you marketing my stuff and I say, you know, I'll pay you twenty five percent, I can't do that on Keep. Um, I can on Max Classic, but but Max Classic or an Infusionsoft looks way too complicated. So um, I so I'm trying to figure out how to uh, do that. Um, I may have you know figure out something with the tags like let's say for an example you um you refer somebody uh, to me i can give them to, let's say the the crystal tag and then i can i can always know that um uh it's an, if they buy anything from me in the future or whatever i can refer that to you i mean that's not the only way that i think uh, i i I've thought of as a uh, as a workaround gotcha okay and also uh it's a, um uh, the, the one thing I really, 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 really love about uh, Keep is because I have online courses. Now, I use a website that is known as a uh, Customer Hub. So let me. Let me log in. So this is how it looks like from the teacher's uh, perspective. Um, oops, wrong one. So these are all uh, these are all my courses. Uh, uh, roadmap for business success, uh, a client lifecycle, a marketing system, you know, and basically all of them. Once this course, once this thing is over today, I'm going to download it and then I'm going to upload it to, uh, to the classroom. So if I were to go to the classroom, okay. you will see you have a welcome, uh, cancel membership, uh, a video, uh, uh, so that way you can opt out at any time, introduction to SEO, subdomains and re redirects, landing pages and sales funnels, understanding the client lifecycle journey. So all the all these uh, uh, Tuesday trainings are now inside here. So okay. that the, the, uh, today's is going to be uh, below there. Uh, last week we had, a, uh, or two weeks ago or three weeks ago, we had creating your uh, speaker media kit. You saw that on the previous uh, classes under the, the classroom on my website. I just gotta go in there and put in the, how much time those things are. Um, so, th so this is Custom Hub. Now, what what happens is once I create, once I have a course on Customer Hub, and let's just pick out Client Lifecycle Marketing as a thing. Go to Settings. Uh, you will see that when I scroll down here that Keep is integrated with Customer Hub. So once I create a, a brand new course, no matter how many lessons or how many videos or whatever it may be, uh, once I create it on here, then uh, then it will show up. And, well, I'll, I'll go in here and, and I will um, uh, marketing. Uh, products. I'll go in here and I will create uh, the course, uh, a description, I will give it this, this automatic price for what whatever it is. And the, but on the checkout form, I can change the price. But once once I've created this here and it's on Customer Hub, I create a unique tag. And what and what happens is if somebody buys or when somebody buys a course, they will automatically as, as part of the sequence, they will they, they will be given that tag. And then all of a sudden now now they are um, now that course is immediately released. So once you hit the checkout you know, button for me and your credit card clears, you're, you're going uh -huh. into the sequence where now the course is yours. 
and you'll be and you'll be sent an email saying, "Okay, here's the link to create your account on Customer Hub, your free account there, and now you've got access to your course." Okay. So, um, as an example, I'm going to see if I've got it here. That's uh, the wrong one. Um, so, um, um, so yeah, here's the, this is for, uh, becoming a self-published author. These are the, the, the checkout forms. Um, There it is. So this is this is what it looks like from the from the tennis perspective or the client's perspective, the student's perspective. Um, here's the library of courses for this person here, and then they've got roadmap for success, and they can see how 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 far along they are uh, uh, in the process. There are the other courses, uh, they, like this one here. I I do not have access to this course because I've not I've not given it to myself. The client lifecycle marketing system. Oh, okay. So that's that's how you, that's how you do your uh, how you do your online courses, and that's again one of the reasons why I went with Keep is because the uh, customer hub and Keep are very very uh, they communicate very well with each other. And for, like for an example, if I was on uh, contacts. And I, let's go for look for me again. Um, I tried in. So if I all right now, I can click on this right now. Add this to me. I now have the course. And I go back to uh, I go back here. Oh, not this one. Close some of these tabs because they're getting confusing. I'll go refresh, and I I should be getting this at uh, any moment now, because I just just because I just gave it to myself. So that's how easy, uh, okay. how um, easy it is to, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, play around with these things. Yeah. Now, do you have any uh, questions about landing pages or CRM questions or anything like that? No, not now. I'll probably have some once I go in here and start fooling with it. But right now, um, I'm going to try to see what I can do with it. Okay. Well, I mean, I would always suggest starting off with uh, MailChimp uh, for free and then uh, toy around with their landing pages if you can figure it out. Um, if that's only for the paid version, then uh, then consider that. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is you can um, do a Google search for an example. Uh, best. Um, free landing pages that work. Um, I would say uh, check it out. Maybe they, they've gotten better. Maybe active rank or active campaign uh, could be okay as well. Um, but the, for as far as uh, okay. plugins, uh, these are five or eight or whatever different uh, uh, plugins. Now with uh, now with uh, um, now with uh, no, we, uh, we, you know, when you're booting a web page, you can also use uh, Elementor. That's how that's what I used uh, to build land, uh, to build my pages, and they do have a landing page uh, feature. I just did mm -hmm. not like it. it. It was it just was not behaving very well. So that's why that's why I left that alone okay. and uh, do everything on on Keep now. Okay, but in order, so in order for me to have a landing page, I need to go ahead and set my yes, you, you, side up the correct because if, if you're going to be doing any kind of the advertising, idea of the, is that that's the idea of the landing page. 
take you back to the web. Well, the, the the landing page is 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 how are you going to be collecting people's information? Kevin. Okay, no, um, the landing right. page is for how how you uh, where are you going to be sending people to uh, to 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 collect their um, their names, their first name, and their email. So that's it's, it's part of your lead capture. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, right. Yeah, I'll go ahead and print this. So, so, so it doesn't have. To be so you're saying that it doesn't have to be connected to a, a particular website it does not Person? have to be connected to it does not have to be connected to a website you'll see that mine are not my mine is my landing pages are connected to my crm now now i um, right right so and let me go put this in the chat Okay, so I just put in the chat the uh, the notes uh, that I took right here. Um, but, but the thing is, on your landing page, it, uh, it it could you know instead of sending them a thank you page, it could uh, take them to a page on your website, and that 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 could be the next action. So you know wherever you wanted to go after they hit the button. For me, it's usually either a thank you page or a checkout form. A checkout form is if they're going to be buying something. Oh. For you as a right, realtor, right. it's probably going to be a, it will probably go to your calendar link. Hey, set up a 30-minute consultation so I can find out what your real estate needs are. Okay. Yeah, there or, is, I mean, I okay. like the whole idea of the, the email thing. Well, the, the, you'll be getting their email regardless of whatever the, the, the next destination is after they click the button. No, no, no. When when the email when I said the email thing, when you had sent the after the landing page, after they clicked on it, you sent the thank you, and then you had the magnet inside the email. That's what I was that's what I'm talking about when I said the email right, thing. Because, uh so that's because you wanted to uh make sure that they're opening up their emails. Right, right. And I mean that'll be a way that, you know you make sure that they're giving you the right email because they, in order to get the information, the email has to be correct. Because, right. you know, whatever times they give us faulty emails all the time. Right. And then it will, it will, it will go out into limbo and, and they will never get the lead magnet. Right. So if, if they know that they're going to, that's the only way that they're going to get the lead magnet, then they're going to give you the right email address. Like instead of just putting some bogus, uh, you know, Jane Doe email in there just to get the free download is going to be emailed to that email address. So if they did put a fake one in there, they're going to go back and they're going to do it the right way. <laughs> well, because some people actually put the link on the thank you page, which I don't necessarily agree with because you, you've never, you, they have not confirmed their email, number one. And then number two, they can get that URL and send it to anybody they want. And then you're not, then you have no control. Of course, Gotcha. You have no control of them uh, forwarding their, their, that email to somebody else. That email uh, is, is a downloadable, um, right? Right. Uh, unless they're going to a site that they have to sign in uh, and have an account on, regardless if it's paid or free. Right. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, sounds good. Sounds good. I will be. Um. I'll go. I I did save the link. Okay, I did save the link, so I will um look take a look at your candle and uh, see if I can get something scheduled. Yeah, I mean, so um putting me in a a link because uh, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Um, if you could, because um, I'm well, one thing about business, you always want to ask for a a review, and I just typed in the wrong uh, URL. So let me do this again. Uh, this is okay. going to go to my Google My Business page. Okay. Because I put a semicolon instead of a colon. So I got to take that out. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's just to leave a a a, a review. Just to say how you know. Just saying how your how this uh, event was. Okay. Um, and um, if you have no other questions, that's. But about all that I have, um, 
And again, I put the also the I took my notes and put it as a PDF uh, 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 in the chat as well. Okay. Let me get this. Okay. So you can double click it, and then that. Um, I know you're on your phone. It's a little bit more difficult that way, but so you can download it to your phone and then email it to yourself. And I'm going to stop the recording.